the fuck do we do that? What's up guys, welcome to part 4 of the Grand Ninja Guide. Yo, part 4? Wow, and to think that I was going to make a one part video at one point. So as you might be able to tell from that intro that's protected by fair use and shouldn't get me a false copyright claim, fuck. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of playing patiently in positioning with Greninja. Nah, just kidding, let's learn how to schmoove. So bear with me if this guide's a little bit awkward compared to my other guides, because I've never done anything like this before. Movement is the most interpretable topic in the world when it comes to Smash, because you can't just compare it to something like 4 Dare, right? We can say, okay, 4 Dare, minus 6 on shield, disjointed, safe fifth space, works as a kill move, works as a combo starter at early percents. But when it comes to movement, I can't say, okay, you want to jump in this scenario, you want to hydro pump ledge cancel, you want to wave land, you want to fox trot, it's really up to you to interpret how to use good movement. So let's start from the ground up. First of all, you need to understand how to move with Greninja. Remember these training drills from part one? Yeah, really grind these out, guys. It's really hard to have good movement if you can't do something such as a short hop consistently. So instead of playing Elite Smash against a Sonic on McDonald's Wi-Fi, set aside some time to learn how to move. This will make you improve so much quicker than Elite Smash. Yes, I hear you in the comments asking why movement is so important for Greninja. Well, it's because he- No, what? Where did the music come from? Dude, get out of here! What the hell is going on in this part? Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. But yes, they did have a point. Just look at these stats, dude. Greninja's top 10 in jump height, walk speed, air speed, run speed, and fastfall speed. So yes, he was, quote, built to run and built to last. But yeah, Greninja is designed to move. So that bad out of shield game, don't even worry about it. Laggy aerials? Yeah, good luck when you're the one chasing us. All right, let's go on to our first topic of the video, or second, uh, I don't know. Finding openings. So a lot of Greninja players look at his top 10 attributes and say, yo, I can approach with this. And then they'll get punished for something like a dash attack on shield or an obvious nair, and they'll keep doing it over and over. This really isn't the way that you want to play Greninja. Instead of using those top 10 attributes to get in on your opponent, use them to make your opponent think that they can get in on you. So every character in Smash has a limited moveset and attack range. Check out this picture, this is really cool. So this is the range at which Ivysaur's tools in neutral reach. A lot of characters don't care about spacing around their opponent's options because instead of having top 10 movement attributes, they have shield. But if you think about it, shielding an attack can really limit your options against it. Say Greninja gets a space forward air against a Mario shield. Mario's options are super limited here. Now let's compare that to if Greninja didn't connect the forward air. Hey look at that, Mario can get a grab now. See what I mean? So your goal as Greninja is to stay just outside of your opponent's burst range, force them to overcommit to an option, and then punish them for it. This goes back to what I said earlier. Every character has a limited moveset and a limited range. Ivysaur is not going to just like move to leader learn Solar Beam. Something else that you need to learn is the cooldown for those moves. Here's what I mean by that. Which one's easier to punish, a charge shot or a falcon punch? Even though Captain Falcon got some love in 8.0, it's probably still a falcon punch. You have to think about this for all the moves that your opponent has. Should you settle for dash attack or do you think you could connect an F smash? You also have to consider your own positioning whenever you go in for a punish. If you're about to initiate a short hop whenever your opponent whiffs an attack, don't drop down and go for a dash attack, commit to an aerial. But there's also the psychology aspect of it. If you don't have time to guarantee the aerial, your opponent's probably going to end up shielding. So you have a bunch of other options to consider. For example, down air on shield, tomahawk down tilt, tomahawk dash attack, tomahawk grab. These are all things to think about in an interaction that will last maybe 20 frames. Let's go back to making our opponent overcommit. Greninja is fast enough to where your movements with him can set up your opponent's movements. If you run up to an opponent, you can scout out their option. What do they like to do? Shield, attack, jump? Treat this as data. And then from there, you can use your movements to counterplay theirs. If they like swinging in a horizontal direction, hey, approach vertically. If they like swinging diagonally, approach low to the ground. There's counterplay to every option in Smash. So if you can force an option from your opponent and know what that option is, it's all the better for you. Something that really helps you get this going. Hopefully you took my advice at the beginning and worked on the movement drills to the point where you don't even need to look at Greninja to control him. 
If you're not looking at Greninja, just pan over here. If you focus on your opponent more than yourself, it'll be so much easier to recognize their patterns, I promise. We're not just moving around for the hell of it, we're moving around to download our opponent's options and find openings. Very few characters have as good movement options as Greninja, so we really need to abuse them. The longer you're dancing around your opponent, the more desperate they're going to be to get one hit on you. And whenever they whiff, that's when you go in for the punish. Cool, how do we combine movement with swinging? This is the tricky part, because if you don't incorporate good movement with your attacks, you're going to be the one getting whiff punished. Let me start off by saying you don't have to swing 24-7, we're not Roy. So the same way you don't have to use dash attack every time you dash, you don't have to use fair or nair whenever you jump. There are situations in which I'd say you don't even want to swing at all. If Shulk's in jump mode, for example, you don't want to swing or else he'll just punish you with a nair. So if you just incorporate good movement, you can time out his jump monada. Alright, back to the whole swinging thing. So whenever your opponent selects their character, you need to already be thinking about what's safe and what isn't. For example, while Nair on Shield is great against a majority of the cast, you're not going to want to do it against Game & Watch 24-7, because that character is broken. So instead, you'd probably want to space fair against him. Does your opponent have no good out of shield options from behind? Hey, abuse the hell out of cross up Nair. Being able to swing at your opponent without giving them the chance to swing back helps so much. But if you're being really predictable with your approaches, your opponent's going to be able to whiff punish you. So remember, you don't have to swing every time. A lot of the time you can manage to fake out your opponent and punish them for trying to punish you when in reality you didn't even choose an option. Yeah, Smash is fun. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Greninja's burst range. This frog is fast. And him being so fast means that he can cover half the stage in a split second. Combine this with our burst moves such as dash attack, down tilt, and back air, and you've got one of the best whiff punishers in the game. So if you know and respect the range of your opponent's options in neutral, you can get so much mileage off of this. Stage control is such a big help when it comes to this. More stage means more movement, and that means the more you can dance around your opponent and whiff punish. Who do you think feels better in this scenario? The Greninja in the corner with Smash Stick on, or the Greninja with all of PS2 to run around? Yeah, probably this guy. While we're here, let me tell you what you can do if you're Mr. Smash Stick. First of all, Awesome, much better. So a lot of the time when you're in the corner, you feel really pressured. If you jump, your opponent can hit you with an aerial. If you roll, they can read you and catch that. Remember how we downloaded our opponent's options with our movement? We talked about collision mechanics in part 3 and about how you can't run through another person, so here's the solution. WMG's gonna hate me for this video, but it's worth it. But yeah, if your opponent's airborne for even one frame, you can run right underneath them. I do this all the time and it throws my opponent off. It's like, what? I just had stage control. And if your opponent has invincibility when you do this, yeah, it's gonna be gone by the time they catch you. So movement isn't something that's just restricted to advantage and neutral. There's also examples of defensive movement. Some examples of this are B reversing, stalling with the water shuriken, recovering low with down air, wave landing, or even our favorite joke from part one. Did a full 180, crazy. Just gonna put this here. And we should be good. Every player has an internal clock as to how long something's gonna take. So just the slightest change in timing can really throw people off. And you're not limited to just these options that I've listed. There are so many creative ways to get out of disadvantage. If you told us a year ago that Phantom Footstools would be the key to getting out of disadvantage, you probably would have gotten some funny looks. But that's the thing about Smash, we're always learning the game more and advancing the meta. So who knows, maybe Thigh Hit Back here will be the new meta next year. Actually, probably not. <laughs> Alright, go grab your popcorn, it's time for Hydro Pump again. So a lot of Greninja players initiate Hydro Pump and have zero control over which direction they go in. And this can leave them really open to a punish. So alongside short hopping, fox trotting, and dash walking, you want to practice your Hydro Pumps. Pretty much every angle of Hydro Pump is useful in some way. And if you're really comfortable with hitting those angles, you don't have to worry about eating a punish. So this angle right here is the most commonly messed up angle of Hydro Pump. If you were to mess up this angle of Hydro Pump and go diagonally at first, you would pretty much be guaranteed to eat a punish. The thing about Hydro Pump is that it can control so much space. 
and if you miss your angles with it, you're really limited as to how much space you can control. And this is really important for things like edge guarding. Hint, hint, wink, wink. You can also combine some really interesting angles to protect yourself whenever you're getting back to the stage. If your opponent has to guess the angle that you're going to recover at every time, this really limits their chance of getting a punish. So grab your protractor and go ham in training mode. In part 1 we kind of just skimmed over hydro pump ledge cancels and since then we found a lot more setups on pretty much every stage. Because Lilat doesn't count. So the thought process behind some of these setups is really interesting and I'm going to share that with you guys. A lot of options have a set distance that you travel whenever you use them. Whenever you use dash attack you're not going to randomly go across the entirety of FD, right? Same thing with roll, initial dash, dash in place, dash walk, hydro pump. You go a set distance every time. So that's how we found a lot of these setups. Other setups require precise timing and really just grinding them out in training mode. I was watching Venya stream a little while back and he was talking about how Greninja has different setups from his ledge teeter animation. That's this thing right here. So keep that in mind whenever we go over setups. So here's an eight minute compilation of pretty much every ledge cancel we found.
Alright, I think I'm going to cut this video a bit short here. I'm trying really hard to think of anything else I want to touch on, but there really isn't much. I was going to get into Substitute, but I'll save that for next time when we go over edge guarding. So let me give you the Spark Notes version of this entire video. Movement is 100% the basis of everything you do with Greninja, and you need to take full advantage of that. The second that you become predictable is the second that you put yourself at a disadvantage. And Greninja has the tools to remain unpredictable. You have so many options compared to other characters and you can afford to get extremely creative. That's what I love about this guy. We're not just like K. Roll where we've pretty much labbed out everything. And there are so many creative options just waiting to be discovered. That's actually the main reason I split the guide up into parts. If I were to make the one part video that I was working on a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to mention down air canceling, footstools, or any of that. Hell dude, even since I released part 1 in April, we've found so much tech. Did you see how many ledge cancel setups there were in this video? Back in April, we knew maybe 10 of those. So eventually, I'm thinking about doing a video where we go over things I may have left out or we didn't know when I uploaded that part of the guide. We went hell and death about Greninja's downer in part 3 and literally like 2 days after that part was uploaded, we found out that you can cancel Greninja's downer pop-up animation with an item toss. So yeah, there's always going to be something waiting to be discovered. For some reason, people think that Ganymedes are the best labbers right now. Let's go ahead and prove them wrong, guys. If you have any creative ideas at all, just go ham and train them out and grind them out. People ask me, yo, how do you find all this stuff? That's crazy. And honestly, it's just hours upon hours of training mode. So yeah, guys, go out and be the best. Enough Smash Talk. This is where I tell you what's up at the end of the video. First of all, we're up to 1,600 subscribers now? I thought I literally just posted my 1k special. That's actually insane. Alongside with amazing support, we are now partnered with YouTube! I'm going to do my best to be a good partner and upload semi-consistently. I really want to do bi-weekly uploads, but holy crap that's hard. I've spent the last 3 days going ham on this video non-stop, and it's only 20 minutes long, 8 of those minutes not even having commentary. 
I'll also be starting my fall semester of college in the next few days here, so who knows how that will affect the upload schedule. But yeah, I really don't know what else to say here apart from thanks for the support, guys. Um, I'm really glad with the direction that the channel is going in right now. If I disappear for a bit, the US education system probably got to me. Alright, see you guys all in part 5 when we go over ledge trapping and edge grading. I didn't watch that again, that was so good. <laughs> Got this gun and here's to you, so step to the way I lose my phone. <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. <laughs>